Welcome back to JRG Guitars. Up today is the beginning of a new kit build. This one again from the Pango supplier. And you could say I've really lost my head with this one. Coming at you. That's right, we've got another kit build coming up today and it is a headless guitar build. Uh, purchasing this one again from the Pango supplier that I used previously on my Explorer build that I thought the build quality was pretty good. So we went for it again here on this headless one. So let's dive right into it and see what we've got. We're gonna unbox this boy. Okay, so here's the box right here. We're gonna pop it open and see what we've got. So not a lot in the box, but it, uh, it should be an exciting one. Let's first take a look at this body. So as we unwrap here, let's take a look. Wow, it sure looks nice. So what we've got here is a headless guitar body that has this uh, figured top on it. It is a pretty thin veneer, but a nice figured top and a unique design, kind of very similar to a Strandberg uh, style guitar. Uh, it is uh, a looks to be a two-piece body. We've got a nice look here. Again, great figuring. Uh, configured uh, here for a humbucker, single humbucker configuration. Clean front, just uh, two knobs of volume and tone. A selector switch, and then our access cavity in the back here, which will have a cover plate on it. Uh, the bolt-on neck with some little drop-in ferrule so there'll be no plate. This will be nice and uh, flush on here. The, we do have some nice cutaway action. Uh, it's not a tapered uh, connector, but it should be nice for access to those higher frets. Uh, this one will be fun for sure. Now, let's take a look at the neck. So, here we go. And here it is. A nice maple neck and a maple fretboard. Uh, pretty good uh, look to this one. I like the side dot action where it is uh, just on the top, or I should say the, the facing dots where they're up towards the top of the fretboard. And then our side dot markers along here. Uh, of course, this has a headless design, so we just have a, 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 a I don't even know what you'd call it up here on the top. We have our connector that will hold our strings up on the top, basically a zero fret, and then a nice uh, 24 fret uh, design. As I look at the fretwork, it really looks to be pretty good. Uh, I see a couple of frets, looks like right here, maybe my second and third fret, maybe even fourth. These first few right here where they're they're cut a little bit short. The other ones look to go nice to the end. Actually, not a lot of fret sprout, but this is certainly uh, serviceable and will be nice. So looking forward to this. Let's check the all important uh, neck joint and see how we fit. Okay. Ho ho. That is snug. Look at that. Pretty nice indeed. Ooh, yeah. So I will have to obviously check how all this will work out with the bridge if I need to adjust any of the tilt or the angle, but that's a nice uh, neck joint, a pocket that seems to be pretty good. Liking that. All right, now let's move on to the electronics. So, so very quickly, we have our access cover plate little thank you note. A set of uh, cheap strings, which these are very nice to have on a kit build because as I put together uh, the guitar and I need to size and dimension things up, it's nice to have a cheap set of strings that can go on for all those adjustments. Then once the build is complete and I'm really setting up the guitar, I put on a set of strings that's my preferred gauge and style and that makes it nice to have these as sort of a test run. Uh, so the strings, it looks like we have an instrument cable. Uh, here are the electronics, we'll save those for a second. I've got knobs, screws. This is our connection for at the top of the neck where the strings will go through. 
We'll quickly take a look at that. So this will just bolt on right there. The strings will come right up through and then come over that zero fret. So that'll be nice, interesting design. I've never owned a headless, but we'll see how it works out. Uh, and then I've got uh, some screws and an input jack. Here is our wiring harness. Now the wiring harness uh, nicely is already soldered up. I've got my volume and tone, my connectors to go right to my uh, output jacks and uh, to a ground lug. So this is uh, just completely ready to go. <clears throat> and then let's take a quick look at this bridge. So here is the bridge here. It is uh, stamped with a license by KD. So with the headless, obviously the ball end is up at the top of the neck. And then we come down here and these will fit through here. There's a little adjustment ratcheter, if you will, that can go in here. And then I just crank this guy around until I get up to pitch. And then boom, it locks right back in. An interesting design, we'll have to see. I like that there are no holes drilled on the face of the guitar, so it gives me the option to make sure I put this right where I want it, or if I wanted to make an upgrade before even using this, I could switch to a different bridge. Now, let's take a look at these pickups. Uh, these are uh, humbucker, humbucker with a single in the middle configuration, non-branded pickups. Uh, the, uh, I should take that back. These are branded with an N for neck, and a B for bridge. They're just uh, pretty nondescript looking humbuckers, but uh, I'm sure they'll do just fine. And uh, here's just some more screws. And then here's my single. Uh, interestingly, these are just two wire conductor humbuckers. I have found that uh, I really enjoy the tones I get out of my Ibanez Gem Junior, where when I put the switch in the number two and four position, it splits the coils of that neck or humbucker and combining it with the middle single coil really gives you those kind of Strat-like tones. It gets close, it gets in the neighborhood. Uh, so that would be an upgrade that I could see myself wanting to do at some point, which would be to have the ability to split those coils and I would need to either deconstruct and reconstruct these pickups, which I've never done, or purchase some four conductor wire pickups. But nevertheless, uh, everything here looks to be in good shape and I think we are ready to probably get started. All right, so there we go. We've unboxed this baby and it sure looks like a nice one. Uh, pretty happy with the figuring on the top of this. There are some uh, deep knots to be sure. There will be some filling that will need to be done. And I'm not sure if my aqua coat grain filler will be up to the task. That's more designed for just wood grains and some small fills. These are some more substantial fills. So I'll have to look into exactly what I'm going to do with that. But it sure looks nice. I'm going to have to see what kind of color scheme to go. I'm almost thinking about a natural type wood design, no more normal earth tone type colors. Uh, but we'll see. I love a maple neck. I really do. And I think I would leave this uh, just unfinished, uncolorized, uh, and probably just give it an oil finish or something like that. Uh, but I do like the fit and I do like the look of it. So we'll be ready to rock on this one. So, I will say thank you very much for tuning in here to JRG Guitars for this unboxing. Uh, this video series will continue on as I go through the build process. If you enjoy this type of video or you like this type of content, I would urge you to please hit that like button, press the subscribe button, and ring that bell for notifications. And therefore, you'll know the next time a video is coming out and you can take a look at the progress as we work through this one. So thank you very much for tuning in here to JRG Guitars. We'll see you on the next one. JRG Guitars!